welding, pumps, regulators, filters, fueling champions. The thought so. The heavy challenge fires. One. He got one. Oh my! Eight thirty-six. Look at the speed. One hundred sixty-one miles an hour. Camella has had the fastest car. The bright red Barracuda out of New York. Can he close the deal? Yes, he can. Red light start for Eldon, and then his car hangs a right. He's got to take his foot off the throttle. Camella's been puffing a little smoke out of the back of that thing, but eight point four oh seven, one hundred and fifty-nine. And for Steve Camella, he came, he saw, he conquered, he is the Mopar Hemi Challenge Champion. You know, anytime I see Hemi cars looking out the window at the U.S. Nationals, it, it's like the ghost of Herb McCandless walks into the booth. Hey, I'm not a ghost yet. <laughs> That's awesome. For those of you who may not know, my guest up here, well, welcome to Indy for the first time, because obviously you haven't been here for a Hemi shootout before. Herb McCandless, in 1970, came here in a Hemi car, and one pro stock. And he's still out here, not racing anymore, but still very involved with the Hemi program. Russ Campbell is supposed to be in the left lane, but Russ Campbell apparently wounded that thing, unable to answer the bell. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't. We've had several of them that got wounded here in the last few days. The performance that they get out of these things is pretty amazing. Lloyd Wolford owns a company called Engines Inc. His wife owns a company called the EverydayChef.net. If you're looking for something for the kitchen, take a look down there. Pretty amazing. These cars, iron block, iron heads, they are the real parts that were cast over 50 years ago. But over the years, they've been massaged, they've been tweaked, and these guys are leaning on them to get, uh, well, more than double the horsepower that you guys ever got. Oh, easy. No problem at all. They've got at least double what we have. So Lloyd Wolford going to get a free ride here in round number one. It wasn't supposed to be this easy, but I guarantee you, he'll take it. You always take a bye run. That's oh, a yeah. Deal. I'd rather be lucky than fast. If you listen closely, you'll hear some of the cars are automatic transmission equipped like Lloyd's is, and some of them actually have a five-speed. There's no rule. You can go either way you want. A 906, 115, obviously Lloyd clicked it off down there. Jimmy Daniels coming up in the left side. There was a time that this seemed like the Jimmy Daniels Invitational race, and Benjamin Kimberly over here on the right, our first matchup between a dart and a barracuda. I know you were always a dart guy. Is there an advantage one or the other? I don't think so. They're both basically the same car except for the shape of them. But Jimmy had this thing sewed up for about four years. He did. He did. The Barracudas are a little bit narrower, so they might be a little bit more aerodynamic. But if I'm not mistaken, doesn't the Dart have a little bit longer wheelbase? The Dart's two inches long. Yeah. yeah. So that maybe gives you an advantage as far as balance and weight transfer on the starting line. Jimmy Daniels out of Pennsylvania. That's the Ray Barton car. They built a lot of horsepower up in that shop. And Louisiana, Ben Kimberly in the right. Got his foot off the clutch first, and Kimberly looked like he might have spun the tire a little bit because that car didn't move the first 60 feet. 8.39 for Jimmy Daniels. This car here will be an 8.30 car. Not on this run, I bet it won't. Jim Hensler no. is not in the right lane. And Steve Camella, Steve has been a longtime campaigner here. That's a car that he actually bought from the Westcott family. And anybody that knows anything about the Hemi Militia knows that in the day, they were definitely the team to beat when we'd come rolling in here. Yeah. Do yeah. you, you know the story about his dart? That's a great story. No, I don't know. No, true story. The car was uh, at the dealership in 1968. Like the salesman took it from right around the block. Really they shoved it back by the service area. Wow, he did take it. Well, not quite to the finish line. 839, 147. It was going 160. 161. Yesterday. So he shut it off a little bit early. Well, they pushed it back in the service area, and they got into a big argument with Chrysler about, well, you need to warranty this. And they said, for what? Your salesman blew the thing up. That's not our fault. And the car was actually sold with a blown-up engine in the trunk. But it was a real Hemi car from the factory when Camella got it over the years, put it into, whipped it back into shape, turned it into a race car, but it's a, kind of a neat piece of history. Here comes the honking Hemi, now driven by Tony DePillo and Gary Wolkowitz. And we got another Dart versus Barracuda, the honking Hemi. Boy, that name's been around a while. Well, all the stars been around a while. I mean, the name has been around a while. That yeah, honk and him has been on a couple of them. Here we go. Wolkowitz got really good numbers down at the short end of the racetrack. Can he 
Stretch that out. 846, 156. That's going to be a win for the dart. Wendell Howes and Jim Pancake coming up next. We do a little dart on dart violence here on the starting line. Back in the day, these cars were absolutely the king of the hill coming out of Detroit and out here on the racetrack as well. And match racing was probably as big as anything in drag racing back then. Oh, yeah. In 1968, I ran 52 different races in 68 with my 68 dart. I won first place in 38 of them. That's pretty amazing. But guys like you, Jenkins, the rest of the Dodge Brigade, right? Sox and Martin, all those guys. Somebody called and go, I need four of you. Okay, we'll be there. Yeah. And you got to include six. You got to include right down there on the starting line, rolled in, dropped the top bulb. You can't do that in the category. Wendell House will take this free ride. For those of you that may not be very mechanical, a number of these cards, the advanced ignition systems they use, instead of having, well, what used to be points, but a pickup in the distributor, they actually have a magnetic pickup that gets directly, gets the signal directly from the crankshaft, so you make sure your timing is perfect with where the piston is in the cylinder, as opposed to working about you know, the time you change the camshaft and all that kind of good stuff. And in the right side, Anthony Rhodes. And Anthony, a little bit late. A little bit late getting his foot off the clutch. He's got a pretty good car, though. Can he run him down? He did run him down. 851, 158 miles an hour. That's pretty incredible to do that when you're as late as he was. And here comes our final pair. It's going to be Mike Skinner on the left side out of Columbus Joint Clutch. And it's going to be Rick Johnson in the right side. See, when we ran a crank trigger back then, we had two pickups. Okay. We started at 15 degrees and flipped the switch. But you didn't have an MSG trick, you can do that on a laptop now. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Rick Johnson, 873, he's going to win this one, 153 to speed. He was better on the tree and let it all the way down the track. Mike Skinner goes 922 at 134 miles an hour, just not quite good enough, so that'll take care of the first round. And just like that, we got Hemi cars in the water, and just like that, Herb is back up here. You can make all sure right. you get loud enough everybody can hear you. I hope so. Yeah, I want people to hear us. Lloyd and them had to put all new valves in last night after the last run. All new valves? Yeah, they got back to the pits. They had no latch on the intake. Uh oh. So they pulled the heads off. They didn't have a set of new ones. They had a set that they had run before and they put them back in because the others had started to give up. Well, I got to tell you, sometimes those experienced parts you feel more comfortable with and you take something new out of the box. Well, they, the biggest problem these cars have is valves. Yeah. They, they're just murder on the valves because they can't get a lot of life out of them. Well, we used to shift them at 7,500, they shift them at 9,500. Yeah, well, you know, you got to buzz the things. You want to make it happen. Yeah. Wendell House on the left side. That'd be the dart. Lloyd Wolford over here in the Barracuda. For a berth in the semifinals, turn loose your favorite heavy. Separated by just over 100 on reaction time. The advantage went to the left lane. The performance advantage, however, is going to be all Lloyd Wolford. He goes 852, 155 the speed, 869 for Wendell Howes at 152 miles an hour. Wendell just never really kind of hit his stride this weekend. Didn't run particularly well in qualifying. It's getting better, but too little too late. There's been a bunch of the guys have a lot of trouble. I was talking to Frito last night. You know Frito. He sure. comes to, he's been to every one of these. He's having some health problems, so we've got to get him well. But uh, he said a lot of the guys that had trouble testing this week, and there were about six or seven cars that, that broke stuff. Jimmy Daniels left, Rick Johnson right. Jimmy, who's trying to get back on a roll where he had won four in a row, as we were talking about earlier. Ray Barton, their team up in Pennsylvania, they take a lot of pride in this Hemi Challenge. They build engines for a lot of other things, but they take a lot of pride in this. And they got Rick Johnson, the Minnesota based Barracuda over here on the right side. Jimmy is a very, very experienced, good driver. Well, the engine driver really got the reaction timer, but I guess if you're going to miss it, make sure you miss it at the time when the other guy does as well. 844, 158 miles an hour for Jimmy Daniels. 878 for Rick Johnson. Both reaction times started with a one, and that's, well, not great, but... As long as the wind light comes on, right? Right. I was down at Steve's pit this morning. We was having an old folks convention. Jerry Cairo, who works on Lloyd stuff, he's 80. I'm 80. And Steve's dad's 82. And we're just having a great time. That's a lot of experience out there. 
a lot of years. But like Steve's dad said, drag racing keeps you young. You keep doing it, you're going to stay young. Kamala's got the solo here, the ladder to buy. He uh, had a freebie in round number one because his opponent was unable to answer the bell. But this was the one that comes on the ladder naturally from the number one qualifier. And so far, he hadn't had to really strut his stuff. He ran it down a ways last time, but he didn't run all the ways. Well, I can't blame him for that. These cars were on the ragged edge. So you don't use them, you don't have to. 31, 8 mile. That's 834. 834. We hadn't seen 830s out here in like well, five or six years. Right, Gary Wolcott's going to have a solo here because Anthony Rhodes apparently hurt something and was unable to turn around. But if your car would run 202 miles an hour in good conditions, if you wanted to run 203, you needed 40 more horsepower. I'm assuming on the Hemi deal here, they're probably in the 30, what, 30, 32 horsepower range? You're just better than mine, probably. I've been out of them too long, but yeah, you got to be in that range. That's hard to find. Yeah, if you're four mile an hour faster than somebody, you got to be close to 100 horsepower out in front of him down at the other end. 847, 157 for Gary Wolkowitz, and he will earn his spot in the final four. And hopefully we didn't hurt anything that time, and all four of them are going to be able to make it back. You talked about shifting at 7,500. Now, back in the day, you didn't have super light valve springs. No. You didn't have super trick rocker arms. Nope. Does Lloyd have anything to slow down Jimmy Daniels? We'll find out. Christmas tree will tell a lot. You're right about that. Let's watch that first. Whoa. Lloyd got him a little. Lloyd got him a little. Didn't get enough. 841, 158 for Jimmy Daniels, 852 for Lloyd Wolford at 155 miles an hour. And I'm not telling you anything that Jimmy Daniels doesn't know. If he's 131 on reaction time in the final round, he will not beat Steve Camel. He, he can go home early. <laughs> he's going to have to have a, at least an O, and double O would be great. Yeah, there were two cars in qualifying yesterday that got into the 30s. That's Steve Camel and Jimmy Daniels. They are the two that waded their way through this Hemi shootout field and will race for the trophy later on this evening. We go from a 327 to a pair of 426 cubic inch Hemi engines. Nope, 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 two. Two. And Herb McCandless joins us. Okay, Herb, who's your favorite announcer? <laughs> I have two. <laughs> who's your favorite announcer? At least I made the top two. <laughs> well, you're talking about two. Steve Camella, number one qualifier. Jimmy Daniels, number two. A lot of us thought these two would be on a collision course, and here they are. The reaction time is going to play a big part in this race. The if, one, if they're close, Steve's got the advantage. Yeah, Steve cannot get in his own mental headspace here. Daniels has been dominating him for years at the starting line, but Camilla has the faster car. 
Both wow. drivers get away on green within three thousandths of a second. The faster car is going to take home the trophy. And guess what? The faster car is still the Barracuda. Eight. 33, 161 miles an hour. Steve Camello wins it again. Down here with some special people, your crew, your entire team down here. What is this moment like for you? $15,000 to win the Dodge Hemi Challenge. It's all year prep for one day. So we've been thinking about this for 364 days since last year. And still uh, an opportunity for you to make some more history. Yeah, well, let's see how far we can go, how many times we can do it. <laughs> for now, we'll enjoy this. For now, we'll enjoy tonight, but tomorrow we start prepping for the next year. Congratulations, Steve. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you.